youths pledged to walk with God in 2018. NCD Governor outlines one city vision and rehabilitation program giving hope. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bertullo. A very good evening and thank you for joining us for the final news bulletin of 2017. Acting Prime Minister Charles Abel has announced the extension of the SIM card registration deadline, which was to have been at the end of today. The deadline has now been extended to January the 23rd, 2018. Minister Abel has been in consultation with the Minister responsible for Communications, Information Technology and Energy, Sam Basil, who has received advice from NICTA on the registration deadline extension. Mr. Abel said the extension to January the 23rd would minimize the potential for disruptions to phone users while ensuring network security is enhanced. He said Attorney General Davis Stephen had also advised that the government was mindful of cases filed by citizens in the National Court regarding the effect the registration deadline was having on people. While assuring the country that they had an additional month to register their SIMs, Mr. Abel said that there was ample time given for people to get their SIMs registered and any further delay to the exercise would not be entertained. He called on both mobile phone users and mobile phone service providers to be proactive to complete the exercise before the end of January. Catholic youths of St. Mary's Parish in Port Mosby have gathered for a New Year prayer vigil. Youth President Cleon Waika told MTV News they get together. It was to bring them renewed hope and they are looking forward to 2018. Catholic youths of St. Mary's Parish have welcomed the New Year 2018 with a renewed spirit. They gathered together last night for the vigil prayers. Uh, so in order, in order for us to be good citizens of this country, we must participate in church activities, especially church activities. Uh, with the spiritual uh, aspect uh, in our life, that will help us to be better citizens of this country. For three weeks, the sacred statue of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart has been with the parishioners. They have offered the prayers to Our Lady of the Sacred Heart for her intercessions. This will be on youth, so a visit to our parishes strengthen us, the, the bond between the youths in the, in the parish, which is good. And tonight, as uh, the youths are here, yeah, which, is, which, is, uh, 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 which is very good for, for the parish as a whole and the support of the parents especially as uh, as they will they will go and the youths will the youths are the ones that will carry on the work the day the recent Clement Kabapal has been supporting the Paris youths he says such programs are enriching because it nourishes their livelihoods while it is uh, a part of this uh, a spiritual um, a building uh, it's also uh, uh, timely yeah? as we uh, uh, end, end 2017 and look uh, forward into 2018. The Our Lady of the Sacred Heart has continued its pilgrim to the Borough of Paris. Fabian Hakelitz. National MTV News. Port Mosby residents have praised police for maintaining law and order since day one of the festive season special operations. They said the women and men in blue are supposed to be spending this Christmas with their families but have sacrificed that time for citizens to enjoy Christmas and now the new year. It was the second night of the major New Year special operations. We caught up with police at the Badili roadblock. Police continued with the traffic checks and other alcohol-related incidents. Mike Swanagi, a motorist, said police were doing a tremendous job at the roadblocks, helping to stop nuisance. But the road block now all, um, all work good. I'm not like this or something. Security personnel Thomas Mark since 2007 has been residing in Port Mosby. 
Compared to previous years, he said 2017 was the most peaceful. A drive to downtown Port Mosby to other security personnel were also busy manning the spots. Good plan or all work him awesome too because plenty all work look awesome accident nothing nothing. Car bomb, car no got the restoration land or some plan all un resident car number to run or city and and cause more trouble and kill him all innocent life nothing. So he good plan or policy put him roadblock or over the night and good plan. Well because I'm work born now. Since since day one of the new special operations, it has been peaceful throughout the capital city, Port Mosby. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. 2018 is a crucial year for Papua New Guinea, showcasing growth and potential as chair of the APEC Summit. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says the APEC Summit is the most important international event where world leaders from the 20 member economies will look to PNG for investment opportunities. In the meantime, the Prime Minister says the 2018 national budget has been framed with great care and will be spent accordingly. The Prime Minister says the APEC will stimulate new investment and business making positive contributions to strengthen capacity in sectors like agriculture, fisheries, tourism, transportation and mining, and even enhancing women's role in our economy and helping SMEs. 2017 was tough, an economic time for the country, but the Prime Minister is determined to improve commodity prices and new investments in the resource sectors, stimulating economic activity and creating jobs. He even said during recent tough times, PNG has maintained positive economic growth, which has attracted investors in the global economy because of their confidence. He said the ruling government will continue to implement key policies like free health care and education, infrastructure development, and decentralizing decision making to local communities. The public private partnership will continue for investment and increasing internal revenue. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. And City Governor Paul Sparkop says come 2018, Port Mosby's One City Vision will be fully implemented. This is to close the gaps of suburb settlements and villages. Governor Pakop outlined this in his New Year message. He also called on city residents to celebrate the New Year peacefully. 2017 was the year of election. Then city governor is determined to continue to improve the image of Port Mosby as Papua New Guinea's capital and as city of choice. But um, in this uh, general election, I think relatively I'm very pleased with the uh, city residents. They behave themselves and they exercise their choice. And, you know, you can be assured that um, I, I'm committed to do my best. I've uh, worked on the, you know, the strategic plan, the priority f uh, four pillars, um, since uh, my election up to now, I am uh, come up with the work plan uh, schedule, and I'm mobilizing the resources to roll out the plan. So, it's I'm very clear and very precise, and you know I'm very determined. The one city vision is put most of its development agenda for the next five years. You know, closing that gap. Huh? There is no too much distinction between suburb and settlement and villages. I want us to have one city. Because we are one people, we have one destiny, you are all under one leadership, it's under one vision. And that is the vision and the goals that I've set for the next five years. And let's start with, with a big start in 2018. With the upcoming 2018 APEC Leaders Summit, Governor Pakop is adamant of the much benefits this world event brings. Let's uh, you know, do this for ourselves, but importantly for our children for the future. 
it's a, an opportunity that we should uh, embrace and we should uh, leverage and we should use to the maximum benefit for the future. As 2018 looms, NCD's journey of transformation and change has to continue. Later, gravity is a big problem too. You know, I can't understand why people keep on, you know, trying to show up or, you know, um, damage or deface, you know, public uh, space and public property and even private property too. So uh, let's do, uh, get rid of that uh, behavior. Speeding, you know, uh, we've come a long way with uh, bitter nut uh, chewing and so on. And I commend our city residents in, res in that respect, but, you know, some people continue to hold us back. So... And he called on city residents to take ownership in a more proactive approach. Some of these issues include domestic violence. And of course, uh, violence and crime continue to be a big problem in our city. So everybody can do their part. Let's just imagine ourselves, you know, how we would like our city to be for our children. How we would like them to live their lives. The freedom that they should be entitled to. The opportunity that they should have. And, you know, once you start to realize that and what you want to live for your children, then you can do your part now. Parents, do our part. Young people, do our parts, especially young men. I want you all to start to change. You know, uh, cut down on this uh, negative activity, cut down on crime, cut down on violence, cut down on, you know, being uh, jealous and envious of others. You know, work hard. Uh, seize the opportunity that is available. In the meantime, the NCD governor has called on city residents for a travel-free New Year. Uh, for the New Year, uh, especially for the celebration, I want to call on our people, you know, to be, you know, um, moderate in your celebration. You know, respect others as you want them to respect yourself. Um, and have a good time, have an enjoyable time, you know, be jolly and welcome the, the New Year. Fabian Hakelitz. Nashulim TV News. Yeah, with National Lim TV News among stories after these messages, inmates say rehabilitation programs giving them hope. Stay tuned for the details. Welcome back to National MTV News. Inmates at the Mumana Jail outside Port Mosby say rehabilitation programs they have participated in in 2017 have given them hope. While they cannot make similar resolutions to those outside of prison, most say 2018 will be the year of change of personal behavior. The inmates have hosted a number of activities, including carols by candlelight during this festive season. And with six more hours before the start of 2018, some inmates came forward with their New Year's resolutions. I'm um, going to go now, I'm going to work, 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 I'm going to work, I'm going to work, I'm Before passing on all the passing, I mean, I'm finished now, I'm like Celestin. Because good plan bosses, nah. but the church come inside now. Nah. Since him life don't go with the calabos. So I love me yet, and I said, 2018, since him passing now. Nah. Stop, good plan citizen law, open again. It will be a quiet celebration for over 700 inmates at Bomana Jail. But most are looking forward to a new start in 2018. Bail blow me, so let me go out now. Nah. Stop. I want to walk, I walk money about. I stop now. Go come to court, blow me now. Look, 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 finishing case, blow me. Every day, close to 30 correctional officers are on duty at the prison. They ensure the inmates are fed, clothed, and taken for medical checks or court earrings. MTV News visited the prison during visiting hours this morning. Duty officer, senior inspector Timothy Kaupe explained that not many inmates had visitors today. However, he looks forward to working with his jail commander come 2018. I got a one one resolution, but me at resolution, I me look forward long. I got some blood done for me, but me look forward long next year. 
il y a des players. Je look forward to the work good one comment à plomi na commission à plomi long next year. C'est le Gunga National MTV News. And 2018 will be welcomed in different ways. A time to make resolutions, like changing attitudes and following the right pathway in life. Here are a few of them. Christmas me smoke now. Be a one Sunday me one of my meeting the Christmas resolution blow me but me cut him sample lily down. Happy New Year, BNG! New Island Governor Sejulius Chan has announced to pay pensions for the old and persons living with disabilities in the province. In a statement, the governor said to only provide funding for Kavang District, claiming Namatanai will miss out for not supporting the policy during the elections. 360 kina is the annual package to be paid. Forest giant Kakara Alam has come out sharing food with communities in West New Britain province. Consultant and community leader Henry Gorea says this initiative unites communities to share the essence and true spirit of Christmas. The timber company shared food and other items worth nearly 200,000 kina. Sakura Alam is a timber company operating over 20 years in West New Britain. But this festive season is a different story for the company and its stakeholders. The company initiated a massive food distribution to communities who have been in business with the firm. Speaking prior to the distribution of over 200,000 worth of rice and other food items, business consultant and community leader Henry Gorea says this initiative comes not only for Christmas, but to strengthen ties between the company and the people. Operation Blame Me, plenty of challenges come up, but you me as a family, you must work one thing. Suppose you may not know strong, and by company too, but not strong. We depend on you, plus partner, plus Sakarlam. Sakalam is strong, you play strong. You may want them to stop, but project your own good. Three different communities along the south coast of West New Britain were visited with over 50 bales of rice, noodles and other food items distributed. Distance and poor road conditions has been an issue for these communities, but that will no longer be an issue. There is enough food to last during the festive season. <laughs> Jack Lapave Jr. National MTV News. Asylum seekers still in Manus and Port Mosby, under any circumstances, should be accorded the respect they deserve. And under human rights, the cases should be treated with dignity and justice. Fabian Hakalitz reports. This call has been reiterated by Pope Francis during his Christmas Eve Mass, saying immigrants must be respected because they are part of the global community. The pontiff called for a new social imagination in which none have to feel that there is no room for them on this earth. This same faith impels us to make space for a new social imagination and not to be afraid of experiencing new forms of relationship in which none have to feel that there is no room for them on this earth. Christmas is a time for turning the power of fear into the power of charity, into power for a new imagination of charity. Clement Kapapal from the St. Mary's Paris in Port Mosby said the Pope's call comes in the right time because Papua New Guinea houses some of these migrants. Uh, we all have to support him in praying uh, for migrants. Uh, I believe that uh, you know, it's our responsibility to ensure that uh, we all live in peace and harmony uh, because uh, you know, there's so much land available where uh, we should be able to uh, accommodate everybody. The Catholic Bishops Conference of Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands is also advocating on the Manus asylum seekers. The refugees should be respected in their respective countries wherever they are. In Papua New Guinea we have the Manus refugees and it's good that the government takes care of them very well. At no time they should be able to think that you know it's not uh, it's only the Australian problem or uh, a problem of some other countries that have sent them here or they have flown from there. So it is good that Papua New Guinea respects them as human beings 
and they are in our shores, so we'll have to take uh, every effort to make them feel at home. Fibin Hakalitz, National MTV News. Turning overseas now, recent terror attacks have authorities in Europe on high alert for the New Year's Eve celebrations. Police in London are urging revelers to be vigilant. They say there is no specific threat, but they are not taking any chances. Police in London are urging revelers to be vigilant. They say there is no specific threat, but they're taking no chances. If they come into the footprint, they will see an effective search and secure regime. They will see physical barriers. Uh, they will see uniformed police officers. They will see uh, visible or uniformed private uh, security contractors. Uh, what they won't see is a number of um, covert resources that are also working alongside us to keep this event safe. Paris is ramping up security as well. At the top of the mine there, the shooting attack in April that killed a police officer on the Champs-Élysées. The measures we will be putting into place will be based on a very strong mobilization of our means, which I will outline. There will be over 10,500 men and women who will be deployed in and around Paris to ensure the safety of Parisians, Paris suburban residents and tourists and visitors, which are always plentiful in the capital for this occasion. The main context is the one we know, a context with the threat of terrorism, which remains high, let us not forget. This simmering threat, this endogenous threat of which we often speak regarding these individuals, who are susceptible to carrying out an attack single-handedly with means that can be very basic, but that does not stop them from being dangerous. That's the reality we face. And in Berlin, Germany, 16,000 extra police officers have been deployed in safe zones. The Red Cross has set up tents for women who feel sexually harassed. The measures are being brought in two years after hundreds of women who were robbed or sexually assaulted in the German city of Cologne during New Year's Eve celebrations. Moving on, security in New York has been beefed up, especially in Times Square, which is hosting the famous New Year's celebrations. Other security measures include snipers on rooftops, sniffer dogs and radiation detectors. Hey there, the New Year's Eve celebration here in Times Square is an iconic event. It's also a massive security challenge. This is something the NYPD has been preparing for since the last confetti was being swept up after last year's celebration. That's according to the police commissioner. And we are going to see a stepped up police presence here in and around Times Square this year. That means more uniformed police officers, more police officers carrying heavy weapons, and more dogs. Uh, where I'm standing right here, including several blocks north, south, east, and west, is going to be shut down to vehicular traffic starting relatively early on Sunday morning. There will be 12 access points for spectators who want to come in uh, and, and enter this area to view the ball drop, ring in 2018. Those spectators are going to see teams of police officers. They're going to see metal detectors, bomb sniffing dogs. They're going to see police who are able to detect radiological material. Uh, and they're going to have to go through two checkpoints, two screenings of their bags and of their persons in order to enter the pens uh, to celebrate uh, the new year. Also, for the first time, the New York Times is reporting that for the first time, police will be attaching reflective material to the outsides of some of the buildings in and around Times Square, uh, and that is so that they can help that those re that reflective material can help them locate any gunman or or shooter should there be one. Uh, that, of course, is a lesson uh, from the Las Vegas shooting. Among the other uh, stepped up efforts, there will be rooftop observation and counter sniper teams. 125 parking garages in and around this area will be sealed. And police officers are also undergoing a special suicide attack training, training to try to help prevent any sort of suicide attack. We're also going to see uh, the familiar sanitation trucks filled with sand and cement blocks to help block off this area to prevent any sort of vehicular attack. Now, authorities from the mayor, the police commissioner on down say there is no direct credible threat to this year's New Year's Eve celebrations here in Times Square. No credible threat to New York City in general, but they want everyone to remain vigilant and they say that there's some two million people they expect to come out on Sunday night should all remain vigilant and as they say, if you see something, say something. To Australia now, new anti-terrorism measures could soon be introduced to Australia's regional airports. This follows a terrorism plot to smuggle a bomb on board a flight earlier this year. 
Federal Government is expected to announce major security upgrades in the next few weeks, but there are fears it'll make some routes too expensive to operate. The minute you start increasing security, you start increasing costs and someone has to wear that. Changes are likely to include passenger and baggage screening, while larger airports could get full body scanners. Still in Australia, many Melbournians are dreaming of striking it rich before the end of 2017. Tonight's Lotto Bonanza mega draw is a massive $30 million. I'd probably go on a trip, take my family on holiday, buy them a home each. For 40 years I'm playing this game and I never won anything. I pay off my house and I'd go on a big holiday and never go back to work. <laughs> Here with National MTV News, we'll have more for you on the other side of these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. A video posted on social media showed demonstrations in the streets of Iran's capital, Tehran, including crowds who have gathered outside the university. Such protests are rare in Iran, but there's rising anger over unemployment and inflation. And in Yuzhasin, it has been confirmed that at least two people have been killed. Both the country's first vice president and a leading religious cleric have said that the government needs to and will do more to address the country's uh, economic grievances. And they have warned anti-government demonstrators from being manipulated by foreign agents. Now, the country's foreign ministry issued a fairly harsh statement in response to President Trump's tweet that the world is watching, saying that it was interventionist and cheap before going on to state that the people of Iran give no value or credibility to such opportunistic expressions by the government or the person of Trump. American officials, through their conduct, have not earned a place from which they can express massed sentiments as simple for the aware and engaged people of Iran. Now, to a certain degree, America's support to these anti-government demonstrators, especially President Trump's support, is not necessarily to their benefit. In fact, it does serve to largely discredit them. That is the sentiment on the ground. But that being said, there are some very real grievances at play here, not just when it comes to the economy, but also some of the demonstrators expressing their displeasure directly with President Rouhani and in what is a fairly rare occurrence, some even going so far as to criticize Ayatollah Khamenei. But there is also an underlying current frustration with the government among some members of the population who feel that it is simply too focused on its foreign policy too focused when it comes to militarily and financially supporting its proxies in countries like Iraq, Syria, Yemen, and Lebanon, and not really looking as to how they can best serve the well-being of the Iranian people. New police brutality charges in the United States have sparked by concerns of a fam family of a 17-year-old who was allegedly beaten by police. His family is now demanding answers close of a peaceful protest here in Troy, Alabama. You probably see the police department is behind me. Several hundred people from across the state, but mostly who lived right here, showed up uh, to voice their displeasure, not just in what happened, but the fact that there's no real information about what happened at this point. Uh, according to police, 17-year-old Ulysses Wilkerson was walking uh, behind a building. They saw him. They tried to stop him late on Saturday night, and he ran Ran away. They chased him, they said, and once they got him, uh, they, they say he resisted, tried to reach for his waistband, and somehow he ended up uh, severely beaten. Uh, the family isn't so sure that they buy the police narrative at this point, mainly because 17-year-old uh, Ulysses says that he only remembers one thing before essentially passing out, and he said he saw a tall white police officer running and kicking him in the face. Now, he suffered several fractures to his orbital bone, lots of swelling in the jaw and his head. And there is body cam video, according to the district attorney, Robin, 
That hasn't been released, though, and part of that is because the police department asked the state investigators to look into the use of force here. Uh, the State Bureau of Investigators has said that they're not releasing anything else at this point because this case involves a minor until the conclusion of the case. But understandably, the family is frustrated because they don't have many answers here. Uh, the 17 year old, according to the mayor, is still facing two misdemeanor charges of resisting arrest and obstruction of government activity, uh, but they still don't know why he was even being stopped in the first place that night. Uh, there hasn't been a really solid answer from the police department on that. And again, at this point, they're not commenting, Robin. So uh, more than anything, the people who were protesting here say that they needed more transparency, that when you have something like this happen in a community and you have a 17 year old whose face looks like that after an interaction with police officers, that the parents and the community as a whole deserve to know a little bit more. Uh, so we're looking at two sides Robin that obviously have very different perspectives on this the police officer in the state uh, they want to get the investigation done the community wants to know what's going on in back to Australia and energy affordability is Australia's biggest economic challenge and they are now looking at measures to reduce their power bills Triple C boss Rod Sims is warning more businesses will be forced to close and jobs lost as energy prices continue to skyrocket. Plastics manufacturer Quenos, which has plants in Port Botany in Sydney and Altona in Melbourne, has announced it'll lay off 100 workers in the new year because it simply can't secure an affordable gas supply. While fertiliser company Insitec Pivot is also considering the future of its manufacturing plant at Gibson Island in Queensland. Businesses are um, horrified by the energy cost increases they're seeing. Most of our gas is being exported. We've doubled its production and the price has gone up. The government seems to have dodged a bullet on energy security. The market operator managing to double the amount of standby power needed this summer. That's prevented blackouts like those that threatened to cripple the nation last year. Labor says families and businesses are sick of the Band-Aid solutions. We need an energy policy that reduces prices and reduces pollution, that encourages investment in renewables. We shouldn't preference, uh, for example, renewables that have received $60 billion in subsidies um, by successive governments. But it's not just about keeping the lights on for the Turnbull government's political survival, with household financial pain a big voter turnoff. 2017 was a very good year with some big news, one of them being the royal engagement announcement of Prince Harry with American actress Meghan Merkel. Here is a sneak peek of stories that made the world headlines from 7 News. The year started in the worst possible way. This is the terrifying moment the chase for a hoon turned into a mass casualty tragedy in the heart of the CBD. A driver running down pedestrians, killing six in Burke Street in the middle of January. The carnage laid bare as the injured lined the Burke Street Mall. Every few metres there's, there's, there's someone badly injured. In February, there was an answer to one of Melbourne's biggest mysteries. A badly decomposed body has been found in the Macedon Regional Park, northwest of Melbourne. Homicide detectives have been called to the area and a crime scene has been established. They're investigating whether the remains could be those of missing Melbourne mother Karen Rostevsky. The tragic start continued when a plane crashed into the Essendon DFO. In the car park below, a raging fireball. All that remained of the aircraft, its pilot and four passengers. There was history at the Oscars for all the wrong reasons. La La Land. There's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. A case that would captivate Australia. This is the mugshot of an Australian facing 12 years jail. Cassie Sainsbury arrested in Colombia with six kilograms of cocaine hidden in headphones. But did she know the drugs were there? And we lost a beloved footy legend, Lou Richards. Cheeky player, cheekier commentator. Oh, the post is broken. Matthews hit it and broke the point post. Oh, <laughs> talk about a he-man. Cheekiest footy vaudevillian. What's my name? Dirty boy. <laughs> It was a media circus when Chappelle Corby was let out of jail in Bali. We're on the move, we're officially uh, leaving Kuta. I'm being pushed by one of the officers as we speak. And arrived back in Australia. How's Chappelle? 
How's Chappelle going? Luring police into a death trap, a terrorist set out to cause carnage in suburban Melbourne. A man on parole killed a Brighton hotel receptionist, took a hostage and opened fire on police before he was shot dead. It was extraordinary. I mean, really, it was like seeing something from an overseas uh, terrorist attack. Obviously, it's not what you expect in Brighton. A devastating inferno at a London high-rise apartment block killed 71. Back home, actress Rebel Wilson was fighting for her reputation. The star emerging from Victoria's Supreme Court, a winner in her defamation suit against Bauer Media. Obviously extremely happy, I was confident um, from the start. And a court appearance too for one of the world's most powerful Catholics, Cardinal George Pell. Cardinal George Pell was surrounded by police as he entered court for the first time. Also in July, a bizarre encounter between a costumed villain and the law. Dressed as the Joker at a sex party, this man had set himself up for a big night out. Instead, he found himself repeatedly shot after a showdown with police. So much of the footy season was dominated by Dustin Martin's future. But it is a fair to say there's uh, historic and good news for the Tigers tonight. It was Dusty's year, signing an $8 million deal to stay with Richmond. He led the team to a drought-breaking win. The Tigers are going to win the Premiership in 2017. The Tigers have got home for the first time in 37 years. And won the Brownlow. Rick Kindling won the Melbourne Cup. Absolutely a dream, Bruce. Absolutely a dream. And Love won in November, when Australia overwhelmingly voted for same-sex marriage to be legalised. We celebrated too when Prince Harry announced his engagement to actress Meghan Markle. Just an amazing surprise. It was so sweet and, and natural and very romantic. He got on one knee. <laughs> Sometimes love is all you need. And on the home front, the MTV National News Team's Year in Review will be on at 7 p.m. right after the news bulletin this evening. Yeah, with MTV National News, Trukai Sports is up next. Don't go away. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. A sailor in the Sydney to Hobart race was running his own race. He completed the 12,000 kilometer trip over the most stretches of ocean in an inflatable boat. At Constitution Dock, the end of another 628 nautical mile journey. Yeah. I love you too. This is what three days of loneliness at sea does to a man. Nathan Rikers did the Sydney Hobart in this Zodiac. It's 20 feet shorter than the smallest yacht in the field, just 50 horsepower and one man. Just see what it was like to, to battle a, the famous Sydney Hobart. Equipped with three EPIRBs and 200 litres of fuel, Nathan left Sydney Harbour with the fleet on Boxing Day. He hugged the coastline, refuelling at Eden and Lady Barron, talking to his GoPro camera along the way. Getting a bit gnarly out there. His biggest challenge, Bass Strait. 40 foot waves. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. On day two, in pitch black and high seas, he jumped in to check his engine was running smoothly. Chuck my goggles on, jumped in, had a quick sticky beak. But he always maintained a sense of humour. Daryl Carrigan would say there's nothing like the sound of a two stroke in the morning. The Derwent River is typically the most difficult and slowest part of the race for yachtsmen, but for Nathan, it was the easiest and fastest part of his ride down to Tassie. Easy. Glass. <laughs> Some have called it stupid. Nathan says it was calculated. I have researched this very thoroughly for quite a long time. And you're not going to drive this back up to Sydney, are you? I was going eh? <laughs> But a warm shower was simply too good to pass up. To tennis and just over 6,000 fans turned up to watch Roger Federer start his training. There's an artist at work in Perth and almost 6,000 fans turned up just to watch Roger Federer train last night. 
Practice became an impromptu match with 21-year-old Aussie Tanasi Kokonakis. The defending Australian Open champion, the greatest of all time, signed autographs, posed for selfies, mingled with AFL stars before facing Japan at the Hopman Cup tonight. I'm probably going to be one of the big uh, favourites for, for the Australian Open. I, I can handle that pressure, but still, I would almost like it to be like last year. Federer's fit. While Andy Murray hobbled through his one-set loss to Roberto Batista Agut in Abu Dhabi, replacing Novak Djokovic, Murray's first public match since Wimbledon did not allay fears over the state of his hip. The great Scott has made the trip to Brisbane. I started to feel a bit better uh, towards the end, um, but yeah, I'll need to, need to keep improving for sure. Also on the comeback trail and down from number 3 to 24, Milos Raonic found a new love during an injury-plagued year. I received this really special um, backgammon board. Raonic could face highly rated Aussie 18-year-old Alex Diminar in the second round in Brisbane. I'm looking forward to just seeing where my level's at against these uh, big dogs, so should be should be good. While Nick Kyrgios keeps a low profile, his girlfriend Isla Tomjanovic drew herself to meet 17-year-old Aussie Destiny Ayava for the first time. We never even practiced together, yeah. And we'll have more of True Guy Sports after these messages. Don't go away. True Guy Sports. Welcome back to True Guy Sports. To cricket now, an Australian captain Steve Smith has scored his 23rd test at the recently concluded fourth Ashes Test. A nod of the head and shaking of the hand signalled an end to the fourth Ashes test. That's the end of the test match. The flat MCG pitch drawing heavy criticism. It hasn't changed over five days and I'd say if we were playing for the next couple of days it probably wouldn't change at all either. They just need to have some pace and, and, and carry in them. Um, this wicket just has none of that. I just don't think it's good for, for anyone. Earlier Steve Smith and David Warner looked to deny England any chance of victory. The Aussie vice-captain taking 161 deliveries to pass 50 before he gave the English skipper a gift on his 27th birthday. Oh, he's got him here. Joe Root, has he done the trick? He has. Well taken. Sean Marsh made an impact straight away. Oh, well, it's, let's just say it got him where it hurts. But the left-hander fell on the stroke of lunch. Suddenly the tourists had an appetite for an unlikely win, but Smith continued to blunt England's charge, bringing up century number three for the series. 23rd test hundred. Superb concentration. Smith joining Bradman as the only batsman to score a hundred in four consecutive tests at the MCG. Are you getting tired of batting at any point, Stephen? No. I'm, in it. I'm enjoying it, so... Um... No, shame we had to call it off in the last hour there. I could have had another hour out there. Ashton Agar has been brought into the Aussie squad for the fifth and final test in Sydney starting on Thursday, with Mitchell Stark also a chance to return from a bruised heel at the SCG. One day it could be green, one day it could spin a bit, so um, we've got all options there. Alistair Cook was named man of the match for his record-setting double ton, which earned him a new place in the MCC members. It might have been a dull day's play, but the Barmy Army kept things entertaining, even inducting one of Victoria's finest as an honorary member and that's it for Trukai Sports we go for a break when we come back the weather details for the 1st of January 2018 stay tuned Trukai Sports Trukai Sports the weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield with doing with Dulux A quick look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. We begin in the southern region, fine, becoming cloudy for Port Mosby and Alota. Fine weather in Daru. Showers expected in Kerama and Popundeta. To the Mombasa region, a shower too expected all across the region in Leh, Wau, Medang, Biwak and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, showers expected in Lorengau, thundery showers expected in Kaviang, Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka.
And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg could expect cloudy weather over the next 24 hours. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And before we go, a recap of our top stories this evening. Youths pledged to walk with God in 2018. NCD Governor outlines one city vision for 2018. And rehabilitation program giving hope for inmates. And that was the final news, sport and weather for this year, 2017. In a few hours, we welcome 2018. Catch us for the bulletin at 6 p.m. tomorrow as always. But up next, we bring you our year in review. On behalf of the entire MTV News team, it was great to have your company in 2017. We'll do it all again next year. Until then, I'm Mary Botulo. Good night.